I worked on the Indestructible Hulk. And uh, I remember that uh, I started working at issue number eight. So the, the first eight issues were done by uh, Francis uh, Laney Liu. And basically he did the design for, for Hulk. And in this particular series, Hulk had to wear an armor. And that looked right. really like an armor for video games, like taught for video games more than an actual book. There, yeah. there so many details and stuff. And it was like driving me insane, especially because it was way different from what I was expecting when they asked me, hey, do you want to work on this indestructible Hulk? I was expecting to work on, you know, the Hulk, which is basically Hulk, nothing yeah, like yeah, a yeah. naked big man. And, right, uh, and all of a sudden, just yeah, bulk. yeah. I just, I just, and, uh, and found we myself... know how much you love drawing naked men. Men oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Naked, you know, naked muscular man. I I couldn't draw <laughs> nipples for eight issues. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Yo, bow, 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 bow. this is the Ink Pulp Podcast with your hosts Matteo Scalera and little old me. Hello. for Telly Bros today. Yeah. What, what happened to Eric? Where, where's Eric? Uh, Eric uh, is uh, somewhere in Asia. I mean, that's the, the official version is that he went to see his mom in the Philippines. But uh, I yeah. think it was just an excuse to just run away from the family. Yeah, I don't but, think he's coming back. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I It's, you know. Back then, you just said, hey, honey, I'm going out and buy some cigarettes. And you would just uh, disappear. <laughs> Go like three times next. And then uh, and then nobody will hear from you anymore. But now you got to go to the Philippines. <laughs> you, you'll probably stage uh, like a murder or something. And then he'll change his name. Oh, you think he's going to go to that level? Yeah, 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 probably. So if you hear some news about him dying... Huh. It's probably fake. He just wanted to abandon his family. Oh, oh, he's going to stage his own his murder. His own murder. Yeah, yeah, his own murder. Yeah, his own murder. How are you doing, brother? So then, good. I've been good, man. How, have you, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, pretty busy. What's the matter? Good. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing. It's just uh, I just finished writing issue number two of my book. So now I'm in news. the same situation in which I have to start drawing the issue. So that's it's exactly what happened when I had to start drawing issue number one, which is like even you though know, you've done one issue already. Yeah, no, it's definitely easier. It's not a block, a literal okay. block like okay. I had uh, last time. But uh, it's always like uh, I gotta start. You know, and especially because I the know. issue starts with a with a sequence that I don't necessarily love drawing. It's not an action thing. It's just We're, you know cars and traffic and stuff like that. So uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I'm not that encouraged to to start. But this time, I made the whole process easier because I've already divided. Although I still started it from dialogues, I've already divided by looking at the dialogues in panels so visually okay i have the dialogues file but i put lines whenever there's a a panel so i can already see how the the thing is going to be divided and i've already done like quick uh layouts of the pages so everything's in there i've already oh, okay. collected all the pictures more or less that i need so you know this time's going to be okay. easier definitely and uh my, my plan yeah, this time is be. not to be that slow as I as I was for issue number one, and just uh, so probably by the time we see each other in Washington and uh, early March, I'm planning on having done? it done already. Wow! Are are you doing any covers? <laughs> yeah, I still yo. That's that's right. another thing. I, I miss a couple of things for issue number one, which is um, the cover. But I have an idea, so. Uh, I'll probably work on that too, and uh, uh, and more important, the the title of the book. 
I'm still super. Yeah, that might help. Undecided. Still super. I have like two or three names and none of them really convinces me fully. So. Okay. And, and the problem is that I can't like, can I usually people ask for advice from, from, you know, their fans or stuff like that, but I can't because I can't in order to do that, I will have to tell the story and I can't because I would spoil right, the whole right. story. So <laughs> right, right. I got to do it myself. And you know, it's, uh, it's hard. It's hard. It yeah, was definitely easier definitely when I when I had to think about the title for my new sketchbook, which just came out. Oh, whoa, 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 wait. You've got a new sketchbook out? Yeah. Got a new sketchbook. All right. All fresh right. from China, okay. from the printer. It's called... Uh-huh. Do, 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 do. Probably you won't see it because uh, you see me all <laughs> pixelated. No. But it's the dumb yeah, shark. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and it's uh, all right. Why is it? Why is it called dumb shark, Mateo? You know, I think some of our listeners know, but a lot. Yeah, we have a lot of new listeners. Well, it's funny. To, in order to say that, I gotta, I gotta uh, make a premise. Like every time for a new sketchbook, okay. Uh, for the title, I use stuff that happened to me, like during my traveling usually to the states like fun stuff that happens to me i i just you know i just okay. use those right, words well, pa pause for inspiration. There. yeah let's talk about that so where does banana shake that was one of your books okay where banana shake from? was uh uh in uh, <laughs> la like a bunch of years ago so uh, -huh. uh i just got to la and eric and uh, his wife cassandra they just they just had grabbed me from the airport and we were driving to their house and they were talking about something. And at that moment, you got to understand, I just landed. So my brain is not fully committed to English. So I was listening and I wasn't because they were talking about their personal <laughs> shit and they were talking about somebody yeah. and something happened to somebody. And but when describing this person, uh, Probably Cassandra said, oh, you, I couldn't believe he was banned out of shake. <laughs> and, and, and immediately I was like, I was, I was like, what, what banana shake? What does it mean? Like, <laughs> what's, what, what does it mean with somebody's banana shake? Meaning it's, you know, I knew that you could use bananas for something. So I was like, maybe he's getting super right. crazy and pumped or something like that. And they started laughing. So uh, that's where <laughs> banana shake comes from. And uh, right. what else? I mean, there's a, a perfect, which is another of my, another one of my sketchbooks. Yeah. Yeah. That comes from, yeah, you know, if you, if you people are familiar <laughs> with, with poop talk with Matteo that we used to do, <laughs> you and I. And sure. Yeah. yeah, Sean and Mateo did poop talk back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I have a lot of funny names for for different you know situations on the toilet, and uh, <laughs> that you can en encounter uh, when on the toilet. Uh, <laughs> the so, experiences you may have. <laughs> yeah. So the perfect, basically, it's uh, what do you call like a, a clean, uh, a clean, clean wipe. What, a, clean break, a clean break, a clean break, no need okay. to wipe. <laughs> yeah. When you, when you wipe and the, you know, the, 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 the paper is pristine. Uh, so I just, I called it, I call that, that, uh, the, I named that, that sketchbook after that, that thing. And Wait, what um, was the cover for the perfect, which cover was that? Uh, I actually used like, uh, so it's just two tigers, two big tigers and yes, uh, that's the one. and the, and the little girl taming them basically and riding yeah. them, and yeah, and I, yeah, I played yeah, okay. with the perfect, like it's a purr. That's like right. That's cat, right. Cat purr. That's right. And, and then uh, there was the I, I have the there was the pink cover, pink black and white cover. It was one of your earlier ones. It was before banana. Oh shaker. yeah, that was uh um. Well, that wasn't really a funny thing that happened to me. It, it just uh. It was okay. uh, some like some like it rough, and yes, uh, yes. 
because yes. at that at that time i i i was trying i moved from a really clean style and cartoony to a more rough uh uh, uh you know heaviest uh yes. use of the of the brush and stuff like that with textures and you know greedy textures yes. and stuff like that yeah, it's, you so, were looking at yeah. zafino yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah absolutely that. so <clears throat> that that uh, came from from that and uh yeah i'm thinking about uh, the next one that i'm gonna do there's another thing that i haven't used yet which is uh okay fundamentally so the next book is going to be called fundamentally because that's the word that okay. i've always used instead of basically yes because yes, i was translating right. straight I, I, from italian to english right so now right. i use basically because you know i got used to it but back then in in italian right. fundamentally is uh, uh fundamentalmente and i use it a lot in italian whilst in english okay it's not a, a term that it's get used so often so okay right right so people would right. notice so that i would say shark? fundamentally a lot well the dumb shark right. is referred to one of our previous episodes so and my my food addiction so basically what happens is sometimes <laughs> when i find myself uh in front of the table with a lot of food sometimes what happens is that i turn into a shark i go into a frenzy and basically my <laughs> eyes turn black and i i i i just see red basically and uh you know and when i snap out of it i'm just the food in front of me is gone but i don't even remember eating it and i finished everything and i just left alone with, with my fucking sadness you know with with a huge sadness in my heart <laughs> It's it's like Bobby <laughs> Kelly telling that story of, of him overeating and his wife leans over and says, aren't you full? And he goes, full? What does full have to do with it? I have a hole in my heart. I need to keep eating until the pain is gone. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a, there's another joke that's uh, similar uh, by Louis C.K. And uh, somebody is yeah. like, uh Okay, so so he's like, I'm envious of other people that, you know, they realize after a certain time they're being eating and they're like, oh, I'm full. Like, my my meal doesn't end right. when I'm full. My my meal ends <laughs> when I hate myself. <laughs> right, 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 right. Same thing, same thing. <laughs> I don't stop eating till I hate myself. <laughs> All right, so, um, so I, I think what we need is a good commercial. I, I think... We should have Jamie, um, when you're talking about the art book, Jamie should put the, the pupils over your eyes like he oh, did yeah, in, yeah, the, in the Dumb Shark episode. Yeah. And then we can, then we can say, um, where where can we get the Dumb Shark book, Mateo? I, uh, okay. No, sorry. I, I just had another idea. Sorry. And then I, I'm telling you. Okay, go but, ahead. Uh, go ahead. I, go you ahead. know what I could do? I could use, remember the three paintings that the fan uh, made for us? Yeah, and gave it to us in New York. Yes. I could just use that face, the shark face, and we yes. can animate Perfect. it. So it's gonna be my voice, but it's gonna be that face talking. Oh, because it's a, I it's a simple. Perfect. I think from oh. what I recall, it's a simple mouth with just the you know the the triangular teeth, the jagged so, teeth. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. could we could yeah. just move the jaw really, you know. It doesn't have to be accurate or, or, or nice, <laughs> right. and that can just be you know the the the, the shark talking. It could be an. What idea. would you want to say? Like, what would you, what would you have the dumb shark Mateo saying? Uh, I don't know. I still still gonna think about it. You gotta think about it. Yeah, okay. I, gotta I think, think it's about a good something. idea. Yeah, You're gonna I gotta have think to think about get... something funny. Yeah. You got to get Jamie a, a high res scan of that. That'll be great because that fan actually just emailed me again, oh, uh, really? recommending some comics uh, that we talked about. Um, so yeah, I can tell I can tell him like, hey, we're gonna use your uh, your dumb shark on the promo for the book. Do you think Which he's gonna he's gonna want a percentage on the book? 
I think. Well, I mean, you owe him that. You owe him a, a huge percentage of the book. Because people are not going to buy it for your artwork. They're just going to buy it for the stupid On top dumb shark commercial. Of the money that I'm make. already wiring him just to watch the podcast. Right, right. Yeah. He needs an advance, basically. You need to give him a raise. So, by <laughs> the way, no, number, he's one of our top bots. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, the, the book is going to be available on www.essentialsequential.com is already the 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 link is already working so you can already pre-order it and uh no actually order Good. it why pre-order it it's already printed right, and, and jason right. has it and right. uh and also this time we managed to have a european distributor so which we is have, huge which yeah, is huge we have alka comics they've already created the the link so you can already go to the the okay. alka comics website uh, but we'll we'll put the um, the link in the description and everything in the description. Yeah, yeah. and um, totally. And so you can buy uh, you can buy if you're from Europe, you can buy it air, there and save some money on shipping because the problem that we had with the previous one, uh, Five Shades of Grey, is that the shipping was so expensive. Basically, for a, a USPS. Uh, shipping which is the you know the shittiest way of ship stuff from the yeah, states yeah yeah the price was it already really is. <laughs> yeah the price was already like something like 30 dollars, which is the price for the book so Jesus. basically you have to double the price for the book yeah, and crazy. then when the book comes you have to pay right. for customs duty so it's it's, oh, it's fucking shit. insane and if you wanted like a fedex express shipping a, a fancier shipping that would be like 200 bucks or something like that. It's just Jesus. fucking crazy. So this, so this is a great deal you got. This is a great deal. Yeah. A European distributor for your art book. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, So t tell me about the, the Shades of Grey title. Does that have a funny story? Or is it just because you were doing a lot of ink wash? Well, no, that's uh, that's not that funny. But it's basically based on uh, on the way I work. Uh, so it's um, for my gray tones, and especially in, on that book because all the all the pieces on that book are in gray tones. So for the gray tones, I right. use five basically five different shades. So I have basically white, which is the you know uh, the page, basically the paper. Then I have a light gray. Right. Then I have middle gray, a dark gray, and then black. So that's those okay. are the, the the five colors that I used colors. Let's call it colors. Yeah, that's quote good. Unquote. That's good. And uh, so I use that. So I used like Fifty Shades of Grey, which is the, a famous book, and I just put an X right on the on right. the zero, so it became Five Shades of Grey. And uh, right. yeah, right. now that I think about it, it's it's not really related to to something funny that happened to me in the states, but you know. Mm. I still have years in when, front of me when, for funny things happening. Yeah, lots of time. When you do an art book, are, do you just basically collect a bunch of stuff you've done and put it out, or do you try to have? Do you try to do anything else with your art book, like organize it in a certain way, or do you offer um, anything else in it? Or is, is for is an art book for you just like, hey guys, here's some of my art? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's it basically. I don't do anything on purpose. Just whenever I see that I have enough material, which means like fifty new pieces, I just do it. And for yeah. a while, I didn't. But then I realized, you know, every time I would go to a show, you know, I've always had, you know, not a lot of products other than other than prints, or otherwise you yeah. you had to buy like you know, an original piece of art or ask for a commission. Right. And I never had that, right. that thing. And, and I remember like when I was younger and I used to do shows and I used to go table by table and see new artists, you know, the, the art book, it's, you know, the, the real product because to me, at least, you know, a print doesn't do it for me. Yeah, I agree. And an art book is, you know, it's, no. it's more or less the cost of a, of a couple of prints probably, but you have a bunch of stuff yeah. and you have, you know, an actual, you know, nice product 
that you can put in your library. It's um, you know, it's nice. How about you? Do you have a yeah. do you have a, a specific concept or do you have something a different approach I'm, I'm gonna, to sketchbooks? I'm gonna tr- I my approach has been like yours, but my next book I'm gonna try something different. My next book is gonna be an a behind the look behind the scenes look at at a bunch of pieces from thumbnail to pencils to inks to paints if I painted it. And I want to give like like an inside look at my thought process and maybe some like mini lessons. Like I want there to be like an educational element to it. Mm-hmm. So it's not just like here's my work, but it's here's my work. Here's how I did it. Here's why I did it. Here's what I used. Here's why I made that area darker and this area lighter and stuff like that. It's not going to be full of text, but I'm going to make it, I'm going to put like light on the text, but just enough that it'll give a a little bit deeper look into it. Yeah. I just feel like when it, when it comes, comes to me, anything I can do, um, to make my, my, what I'm putting out, just have a, a little bit more to it than just a presentation. My art is going to help me. I mean, like where you are, you can just put out an art book and you're going to sell out. Like no question. You're going to sell it fast. So uh, I'm going to try this and see if that helps. Are, are you ready? Like you planning on doing one or, or right now is just an idea? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I'm going to launch the Kickstarter. I'm going to kickstart it. I, mm, I have awesome. a book designer and he's already, he's got the rough design of the book down. Um, and uh, I just now have to do pick the pieces and do the write-ups and get those to him and he can put it into the book design and then we can get a quote. And I think I'm going to try to launch the Kickstarter in October. So when we're at New York, I can like have like little cards to pass out, like check out the Kickstarter for my new art book and, and do it that way. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's one of my things I'm definitely doing this year and it's in the pipeline. So it's already being worked on. That's awesome, man. It's awesome. Like, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. so. I mean, everything I'm trying to well, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no, no. Everything you're trying to. Everything I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to bring in extra money wherever I can to give me, like I've always said, to give me a little cushion so I can do my book. Cause that's, I mean, it's like every day I wake up and and it's, it's right there in my head, like wanting to get out and I just need to have the money to be able to, to sit down and do it instead of, cause every minute I sit down now is spent doing something for money because I'm trying to save. So that's the hope. So my hope is that the Kickstarter does really well. And then maybe that can fund me a portion of the time to get the, a portion of the book done. And I can build on that. That's awesome, so man. We'll see. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a plan. It's a plan. Is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk? Uh, I did want to talk about the new season of Fargo. Oh yeah, bit. right. I haven't uh, today. They released the last episode, right? Yes, I know. I'm gonna watch it uh, later today. Yes, um, me too. Man. You've watched all the seasons, yeah, yeah. So, d- what's what do you think is the best season so far? Ah, it's really hard for me. Like, I'm really loving this one because of the characters. It's so good that are in there. Yes. Every every single yeah. character, probably the one that I don't really really like so far is the sheriff's son. It's um, okay. It's a kind of too much the guy of a, from Stranger Things. Yeah, too much of a yeah. caricature. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I see what you're saying. But in general, every character is really like it's more or less of a caricature. Of real, of real character, Dude, they're it, all exaggerated. But yeah, that but, one, I don't know. I didn't. It didn't. You know, it didn't work with me. I love but, it. You know, with the story, yeah, it I works it. absolutely. So it's. Uh, yeah, it works. It's such a good show. It might be the best show on TV. It's so yeah. Good. Right now, probably that, and probably Barry. I still have to finish uh, season three, I think, but. Uh, because the, the problem is that I can't see the last find season. it. No, it's uh, it's still have to come up 
it's basically uh, uh I saw the first uh three episodes on um mm-hmm. on a, on a flight. They had the first three episodes. This they do this fucking annoying right. thing. They just have it season number 1 episodes 5 through 10. And then season number two, yeah, episode three to seven for no fucking reason. So they <laughs> had the three, the first yeah. three episodes of uh, the third season. So I watched them, but I, uh, Dude, it's still, I, they still have to buy the rights uh, in Italy. So I, I only saw gotcha. the first two seasons and, and I got the, those yeah. three. I thought three season episodes. three was a letdown. I oh, thought really? I, I, season three. Yeah. And the finale I thought was really like, like oh man, like that. That's how you're ending it. Like I, I don't know. I, I like as good as the first two seasons were. Mm. I didn't. The third season just didn't have the same. Is it over? Same or awesomeness. or they're playing on on yeah a yeah four fourth. Oh, it's no, over. No, no, no. It season, ends. It on ends season three. It ends it. Like oh shit. Yeah, it ends it completely. Okay, so so, uh, so okay. Thank you for spoiling me the fact that he's gonna die. I didn't. I didn't say that. Whoa, I'm it just ends saying the story. It ends. ends it. Yeah, yeah. But the way you said it, it is gonna die. Bill no. Hader is gonna die. Like no, Bear is gonna that. die. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I did not say that. <laughs> and and that's not even what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not even talking about Barry. But just the way it ends with all mm-hmm. the characters was just like so. And Bear and dying. It, yeah. Yeah. I know. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Barry doesn't die. Barry does not die. Or so, does he? <laughs> oh, oh, you know what just started today? The the new season, the new True Detective one as well. I know. It I heard started it's amazing. Today. Have you watched it? I, I watched the first like uh, 10 minutes, like the premise of the whole thing because I was eating. But then I had, you know, I had stuff to do. So I, I stopped it and I'm going to watch it in another moment. But uh, yeah. I watched the first season of True Detective with Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the second season with uh, Colin. Um, yeah, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Farrell. Farrell yeah. yeah. And I thought I thought it was it was good. It wasn't great. Yeah. And then I stopped. So d- did you watch the third season? I watched the third season. And by the way, regarding in regards to the second season. I I really yeah. really liked it. I think that what damaged it was the fact that season number one was fucking incredible. So a lot of people I, make I the would comparison, and they 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 right. shit on right. season two. But I loved season two. Like I love the characters and everything in uh, there. Yes, I I agree with you. Yeah, uh, I agree with what your assessment. And season two, I did enjoy. It just wasn't like season one was so out of control amazing yeah that yeah season two was was yeah. very good but it just wasn't you're right it wasn't season one but i hear this new one is as good as season one like there's oh, a lot of hype awesome. behind it awesome well season three i personally so, really liked it because it is i want to see it super slow and i'm realizing in yeah. in this last few years i've been realizing how much i love like a slow show or a slow movie yeah, especially a TV show. Yeah, it's uh, it's unbelievable because especially just the you know in this last ten years or so, like the shows have become like too much. Like constant yeah. stuff has to happen to you know keep yeah. people entertained, yeah. and the probably I mean yeah. for a reason because the attention span of people just diminished That's a lot exactly right so they have to keep you yeah. you know you know i don't know it's distracting you with you know, oh this new thing happened yeah, this new thing happened oh whoa, 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 whoa. right right but I, i'm starting to hate that and uh Me so too. Me I, too. I really love when i see something that has a you know a slower pace like for example yeah. there's one that it wasn't successful at all which is uh called homecoming with Julia Roberts, I loved it. Okay. It's basically a psychological I didn't thriller, see it. and it's very uh, Hitchcockian. I don't know how to say it. Like even uh, the music yeah. no, that's is right. very that's Hitchcock. Right. 
and there's there's okay. specific choices that they make. And basically, you kind of know already what's going on since the beginning. So there's not a lot of right. surprises, but it's all based on the rhythm. And this, you know, you always have the feeling that something really bad is going to happen. And uh, I loved it. Right. I, ju- I just love that. The, the people that try to change the rhythm of the story and the play around with it. I really, really like it. Uh-huh. Um, you know, there's a cream out there that your doctor can prescribe to you for that itchy <laughs> cock of yours. <laughs> I had to go there. I had to, I had to grab the little fruit. <laughs> but yeah, oh, so another, another show that so I loved, stupid. and that was a successful one. It's an HBO show. Was uh, uh, yeah. the Night Off with uh, John Turturro. As a lawyer. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I wanted to see that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that that one you should. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that one you should uh, you should watch it. As uh, well, uh, what's the name of the genre? The the when there's a trial going on. So basically, the whole season is a is a trial. Uh, legal uh, uh, legal uh, drama. Um, co- le- procedural court procedural. I think is what they call it. Ah, uh, okay. It's it's the name of the genre. Yeah, court procedural. It's like what goes on in a court case in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. But it's not a documentary. It's a, it's actually like live action. It's no, 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 okay, no, okay, no, okay. no. It's fiction. It's fiction. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that I would like. Did you, you know what you would probably really like? Did you see Mayor of Easton? Mm, no. no. It's on HBO. It's really slow and really good. It's about this cop, this woman cop in this teeny tiny little town and then like North of Boston on the shore there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it's uh, and, and a kid gets murdered, um, but it's really slow and really good. Great characters, really good acting. Um, it's a, uh, it's pretty depressing at times, but it's really good. You might like that one. Awesome. Awesome. I'll, I'll look, look out for it. Definitely. Yeah, Tommy recommended that one to me, and I watched the first few episodes, but I didn't finish awesome. it. So awesome. I need to do that. So, is there anything else? We would digress to you know, yes. TV shows, but is there anything else in particular you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. I want to talk about art a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So, I'm, I'm doing this Fortnite loading screen now, and, and mm-hmm. I'm curious. Like, every time I take on a job that has a video game character... I forget how much work is involved in the character design uh, for, for video games versus like animation and comics. Mm. Do you find that that same thing? Yeah. Yeah. I think I spoke about it in, um, in the episode with, uh, with uh, Kaiser. Um, Yes. It's especially, I think, especially us as a comic book artists, we, notice that because yeah again like our our job as comic book artists that we work in economy meaning i gotta get to mm-hmm. the best result possible in the minimum in the least amount of time possible and instead when you work mm-hmm. in animation and video games it's the completely other way around yeah. uh fuck i got lost opposite opposite uh, yeah the other way around is that correct yeah all of a sudden yeah. i forgot yeah, makes how to yeah. speak english sorry so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had a, a, a mini stroke so so basically <laughs> another one, another one. <laughs> behind like even the simplest character like a character that is not even that important there's so much work and energies yeah. and, and money spent on it yeah, that yeah. it's it's incredible. So you gotta do this much to get to this in in animation yeah. or, or video yeah. games. Well, you know, in comic yeah. books, you had to do the opposite. You gotta work as little as possible to obtain, you know, this. So it's it's now that yeah. There's truth to that what you're saying, and and in your work, I definitely see that. But there are artists where I, I like when I look at someone like Art Adams, I don't see someone focused on economy. Um, you, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I know that. But you know, 
in order to obtain that, like, I, I remember something that um, uh, Sean Murphy uh, wrote years and years ago. Uh, and he was mm -hmm. describing a comic book art as quick art. Like, so uh, I'm sure that Art Adams spends a lot of time on his stuff, but still, mm -hmm. like, he's not that he's doing like 50 studies of a position of a character. Like, right, he learned right, right. a way how to, you know, tell the story and, and be quick with it. Right. So he has a database of positions and, uh, you know, character poses right. and stuff. So with still reason in that, right. you know, with that mindset. Uh, right. I get and, you. And, uh, and then he just renders a lot on top. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that for a main character, okay. for example, for okay. Fortnite or something, I, I don't know how many hours of study there's going to oh, be I, behind I that. Imagine. You know? I so, can't imagine. I can't imagine. So, yeah. but, the, but this, this, thought of yours that comes from because you now you have to to work on a specific character what's going on with with uh with the job yeah yeah so like for example i'm, I'm doing a luke cage painting for marvel snap for a card mm -hmm. and i'm also doing the fortnite loading screen so last last week i was focusing more on the luke cage and i remember i like i penciled the card in like a day like i just I sat down and I penciled it, which, which I wasn't even expecting to go that fast, but, but you know, that was pretty fast for me. And then like, I sat down this week to pencil the Fortnite screen and I'm like one day in, I got like the upper torso of this character done because every <laughs> like five seconds, we're like, all right, let me go look at the costume. Let me understand how that would move in the position I have. Oh, yeah. What's the texture there? What's happening here? And I mean, it's looking great, but I'm like, fuck, man, that shit fucks with me. It, okay. It, okay. Now, like, now I'm hard getting hard the point that you wanted to get to. Yeah. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Yeah. I was thinking about something else, uh, but, uh, and I digressed over this thing that we talked about already. Yeah, well, the difference yeah. is, you know, when you have a main, especially if, if we're talking about the main character in comics and, and you're on, a, yeah. you know, on an ongoing series, it means that just, just yeah. to do the math, like, okay, so I work on Black Science, okay? Black Science is uh, yeah. 43 issues long and overall is a thousand pages, mm -hmm. okay? If you consider right. a, a, an average of not to brag, yeah, no, no, no. It's again, <laughs> uh, not because, not, uh, yeah, right. So, uh, if you consider <laughs> an average of five panels per pages, it means five thousand panels. All right, and right. so the main character right. is gonna be there for at least two thousands, two thousand panels or something. Yeah, at least a thousand panels. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta draw it a lot, like. Right. So the character has to be done practically because you got to draw it over right. and over and over again. So for video games, yeah. once you, once you establish, you know, what the fuck the character is going to be doing, like, you know, you got to, you know, once it's done, it's done. And then the computer basically does right. it's, uh, it's work. And, right. and, and not only that, there's a, there's an audience that's really, really focused because especially right now and in in uh in video games like everybody plays video games there's a lot of video games so people are really looking for something original and basically everything's already been done i think so you gotta right. you know you gotta right. you you gotta play the card of you know the more the most complex and original design so you gotta add stuff cool shit and you know uh, accessories and all this cool yeah, shit on the character yeah. so so i think it comes from from there you know a character like that i don't know which character you're talking about but i'm thinking if if you have to do a comic book about that character like i would want to shoot yeah, my balls be a lot. after it two would be battles a lot. you know right right well also it's the first time i'm drawing this character and I'd imagine I'd, I'd get a little more used to it, but yeah, it's just, I'm just like sitting here, like working on this, like, this is, 
like I scheduled this out. I'm like, this is to eating up so much time. And I just, I always forget that. Like, I always forget, like, if you got a video game job, give yourself some more, more time. Cause those designs are fucking complicated, man. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember uh, when I did back in 2000 and think in 2012, I think I worked on, yeah. um, on the indestructible Hulk. And I remember, yeah, the comic, uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, I remember that uh, I started working at issue number eight. So the the first eight issues were done by uh, Francis uh, Laney Liu. Okay, yes, and yes. Uh, and basically he did the design for for Hulk, and in this particular series, Hulk had to wear an armor. And that looked right. really like an armor for video game, like taught for video games more than an actual book. There, yeah. there were so many details and stuff. And it was like driving me insane, especially because it was way different from what I was expecting when they asked me, hey, do you want to work on this indestructible Hulk? I was expecting to work on, you know, the Hulk, which is basically Hulk, nothing yeah, like yeah, a yeah. naked big man. And right. uh, and all of muscle, a sudden, just yeah, bulk. yeah, I just, I just, and, uh, and found we myself... know how much you love drawing naked men. Men Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Naked, you know, naked muscular man. I I couldn't draw <laughs> nipples for eight issues. Yeah, it was drawing men. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it it got, he, that actually makes me think of when when I tried out for Batman. Uh, for that Arkham Manor book I did, uh, they, uh, the editor Mark Doyle wanted me to do a um, a pinup just that he could use to sell the idea to the the up the higher ups, and so I did Batman like a more traditional Batman like like the Bruce Tim costume or like the old costume like that that's such a perfect design to me because Batman's so easy to recognize the silhouette is incredible it's very simple and clean it's it's a perfect design yeah and then uh then so I turned that in and Mark was like well we got to stay with the new 52 Batman mm. I was like oh let me look at that and the, and Cully designed that one yeah. and I look at it it's just it's like plate armor all over him I'm like fuck yeah <laughs> that's yeah, a yeah. lot a lot of shit so you know i i at first when i first started doing the book i was being very specific but as i went on i was taking more and more shortcuts but that added a lot of time to working on batman did did you because you worked on batman around the same time but you, you did yeah yeah that issue. was the new 52 um, as well so the costume was was the same yeah. one that you that you had to work on but yeah, it was just an issue. So, and, and for me, I found a way to simplify it. So they just became, you know, lines on his costume. And I, and in right. general, right. I'm not, if you, if you look at my stuff, most of the time I change things around in order to make my, my job easier, yeah. depending on the camera angle, if I need a pouch in that position to convey a specific right. sense of motion and stuff, I'll just change the outfit. And I don't care if you if you look at Black Science, like the the suits, the space suits that they wear, like they change over time. And I get rid of some details, and I yeah. get new new details. And that's you know. that's something I like about comics. It's, yeah. You don't have to be so exact. I, I, I like that about the the um. Yeah. Also, the a thing that I do is that I don't spend so much time studying the characters, and I'd rather learn and and, and you know get you know, a new relationship with the character as I'm working on the book. So you'll see basically Agreed. the main characters changing along the, along the book. So they, they'll start looking the way they should by issue number 10 or so, you know, when I, when I start, you know, right. Getting a real grasp on them, if that makes sense. I don't know if I use the right term. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, uh, you know what? Something I wanted to ask you. Yep. Do you ever have an interest in like taking a class, like an art class, to to broaden your knowledge or, or or practice something? I know you practice a lot of new techniques as you're working, but like, do you ever want to like sit down and do a figure drawing class or or a painting class or anything like that? Mm. 
Well, it's not going to be like figure drawing or something because I'm not that good at it. You know, I'm not one of those guys that knows perfectly like anatomy and stuff like that. I'm more instinctual. Right, that's why I'm asking, would you want to study that? Oh, study that. Not Okay, okay. So, uh, sorry, again, bad English sometimes. So, taking a class, it means, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, mind it, doing like it. Yeah, student. yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you mentioned the two actually where I think I lack a lot of experience, but especially the painting uh, side. Uh, I would love to do a painting one. It uh, would be a, a nice idea. What are you asking? Do you, do you find anything? No, I mean, because that's something I'm trying to make time for this year is – is um. Uh, take take a like a schoolism class, like you know, mm. do like fifteen okay, minutes online every morning. Classes. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something, but it's just because I, I mean, I, I do have a real thirst for knowledge, and and I want to learn more, and like not just to get better, but to have a better understanding. And yeah. I, I feel like the more I learn, it opens up doors for new ideas and new avenues to explore. So, like when I when I dove into painting during covid it was from a from a position of like i don't know how to do this at all really and it was just like let me just try everything and after a few years i was like i've gained a little bit of an understanding and i i've learned enough to know like i need to i want to learn now and and that's where Leah's helping me out and, and i'm realizing like values is like the big oh yeah thing i need to learn now is how to really use my values um, and actually that leads to a question I wanted to ask you, because one of the things I spend a lot of time doing is looking at your grayscale work because mm -hmm. you have such a, a good command of, of values in your composition. What helped you get, get a good command on using values that way? I don't know, to be honest, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I still have to rationalize. It's like the covers, you know, the, the covers, the, the workshop about covers that we did in yeah. Abu Dhabi. Yeah. It's something that yeah. I, there's a bunch of stuff that I've always done instinctively just by learning how to observe and replicate. And, and I never stopped for a second and, 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 and started thinking, Hey, but why do I do it? Like, what's the reason behind right. it? I just, I just, um, you know, uh, it's probably my it's spirit of observation. Yeah, it's instinct. It's just uh, I try to be when I look at something, and and I find it interesting. I try to be a sponge as much as I can and observe right. that thing. But well, sometimes that, I don't know what I observed. I know that I have absorbed something, but I don't really know right. what. I just know that I have to find a way to replicate that thing that I saw, but. And, and and I it's that thing is attractive to me somehow, so I gotta try and redo that. But I don't really know like why, like the the, the specifics of it, and I gotta okay. stop and think, really think about it. So what got you? So like backing up to earlier callback, um, you when you did your your some like it rough sketchbook at that time you were not using grays it was a lot of just throwing the brush around with black ink yeah and yeah. you 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 evolved into using washes yeah um, was that because it was faster for you no 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 I just started like at a certain point I was like uh, uh, I started when I did black science I decided you know what. I'm going to try and use uh, gray tones because I've never done it. And I like, okay, you know, okay. I, I like the effect and I want to try it. So I actually tried to do it uh, with the actual, like the first issue of Black Science is entirely in, uh, mm -hmm. in washes, ink wash. Uh, yeah. Then I, I gave yeah. up on that because it was too much work and it wasn't working well with, the, with um, Dean White's colors so uh, i prefer right. going back to just straight up black and white after it but i kept it for covers because i i saw something interesting that i really liked so i kept one door open 
uh, gotcha. to it for, uh, you know, for, for covers because I, I, yeah, yeah. I wanted to get better at it and, uh, and I decided, yeah, the covers are going to be in, in gray tones because, and I'm still to this day, I'm still using that for covers. And uh, sometimes right, I use right, it for right, interiors right. as well. I did for I did it for Harley Quinn, but um, King, King of Spies, you did it right mm, here and there, just the panel or two when necessary yeah. when I wanted to. Okay, but uh, but it, it's not everywhere. That the main the main part, like ninety five percent of the book, is done just in black and white. And um, okay, okay. I don't know. It's really hard for me to answer to this question because. I I genuinely don't even know, like, uh, on the spot, I can't rationalize that. I just decided that, okay, I want to try. I, I have, I feel the urge of doing this. So, you know, sure, I'm going to, sure. I'm going to try and do it. But definitely, I agree with you there- that when it's time, it, it comes to painting, having a, a, a good sense of values, it helps a lot. You might not pick the yeah. right colors in general, but you still find a way to make it work and you still find a way to see if something's off. Maybe you don't have the, right. you don't have it, you know, uh, explained like scientifically. You don't know why exactly it's not working, but you, you see that it's not working because the values are not, are not there, you know? Yeah. I remember Stelfreeze uh, a while ago. Um, was talking to me about this and he was like if you get your values right you can fuck up some colors and you'll yeah. be fine Yeah. but if you have your values wrong and you're using your colors right it's still not going to read very well yeah so uh, that's why I think it's a it's a good I- idea it was actually it was Abu Dhabi like talking to Brian about values and looking through your work and at the time uh, M- Aaliyah was kind of like giving me some little lessons on the side with a painting I was doing and I was like, I got to work on values. This is like yeah. the, the next thing I need to really focus but on. For example, and I so much time. Yeah. And, I, and I think yeah. that you could do is when you're uncertain, because uh, if, if your, your values are not there yet, one thing that you could do after finishing a painting, you could just grab the painting, just scan it and put it into uh, yep. gray tones. And you will immediately see because everything Dude, will I, become gray yeah. immediately. I, I would I would take a picture and send it to Aaliyah and he would look at it and he'd send me the picture back. He just put a black and white filter over it and he's yeah. like, see? And I was like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But um yeah, it's it's uh is was there someone was there an artist or a book where you saw ink wash being used that put the seed in your head to, to do ink washes and values, or it just was a feeling you had? Yeah, just that in my head. And and even now with the new book, I'm trying new things. Like I want to, for example, we recently uh, talked about uh, Gabriel Hernandez Walta. Like you, I don't yeah, know if you'll yeah. be able to see that, but I'm trying to convey some of his feel on my stuff. Yeah. Not in a drawing uh, department, but more on the texture. That's why I'm not using brushes anymore okay. for that book. I'm just okay. uh, well, I'm using brushes for for uh, uh, for the gray tones after, but it's mainly oh. line work. Right, right. And uh, and, and the lines, I try them. I try to have them not too precise, and um, mm-hmm. so I used a lot of. I, I I've been trying to channel some of his uh light lines energies and and um yeah, and another one that. that was really influential lately was uh Andrew Robinson because I saw yeah uh yeah. two I, I have two or three issues of the the new book that is coming out that is uh yeah. is doing the art for yeah. uh the new book that is doing with yeah, Lee so pretty with Lee Laridge yeah. and uh yeah, the guy's a monster. Like literally, if you ask me, yeah, he's he's insane. Yeah, if you ask me, who's the best artist now? Like, there's a lot of people. Like, for example, Sean Murphy is inks are amazing. He's a great artist. His backgrounds yeah. are like out of the chart. Eric is yeah. super dynamic. Yeah. The energy, the design. Yeah, yeah. 
there's plenty yeah. of people that I could say they're monsters, but he's on a other level. Then I think he lacks on a, on a lot of different other stuff, like you know, business wise, he doesn't always take. Yeah, I think yeah. the 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 best decisions ever, or whatever. Right. Well, the thing about Andrew is he can do it all and he can yeah. do it all great. Yeah. It's like if you need a painting, he can do the most amazing painting. If yeah. you need black and white, he can do the you know, if you need yeah. cartooning, if you need storytelling, it's just every every uh, area of of art he's he's a master of. Yeah. And it's it's sickening. So like, yeah, there are guys who like like you said like Eric like no one can draw dynamic shit as good as Eric. Yeah. Um, but it's like, the, it, like Andrew can just do it all. He can just yeah. do anything you want. He can do it. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. And uh, <laughs> I, I remember in Abu Dhabi, I was talking to, to Brian Stelfreeze, which has a completely different approach. Like the way I define Brian is right. that he's a scientist, you know, yes, that has been Absolutely. borrowed Absolutely. By, by comic books. Like he's, inside his right. spirit is the one of a scientist so he yes. like yes he is need his need he told me is to have everything figured out before he starts actually working on something yes you know? so he needs yes. that everything's already figured out yes and uh and uh yeah. heroes con years ago uh you know that heroes con they had this uh the auction on saturday Yes. So basically, yes. yeah. Uh, to make it as quick as possible, like basically every artist that's being invited, they invite them to you know paint, to do to basically give a paint, uh, painting, and yeah. there's a big auction on uh, on Saturday, and with the money that yeah. they get from it, they'll uh, do it to charity. They'll give it to charity and stuff like that. And it became a big thing. This this thing it became a huge competition. Uh, yes. And, uh, and you know, the main names, they always want to have the, you know, the, the, the piece that sells for the most money. And, right. uh, and right. they, they, they set up a stage uh, in the showroom. They have a stage where they give you whatever you want, even a canvas and they give you paint, uh, yeah. brushes and everything. You can paint live at the show during the show. So yeah. people can start seeing what you're working on now. And, and, and then, right. you know, then they'll know if they want to bet on your, on your, on your piece at the auction. And, uh, and uh, Brian and, and Andrew Robinson were painting next to each other. And Andrew, I think was the year when he painted the um, uh, Conan, uh, Conan cover. Oh yeah. 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 So they started and, and Brian, you know, at, Again, he had everything figured out before starting to draw it. And and yeah. and he yeah. saw Andrew just, you know, doing stuff. And he was like, So what's yeah. your process like? Well, so this is the first layer, then what you wanna do? And he's like and Andrew Andrew was like, oh, I I don't know. I'll just right now I'm just doing this. <laughs> yes. And then yes. if I don't yes. like it, you know, I'll change it. And basically I, you know, was, I remember that piece because I kept going back and forth uh, to the showroom and, uh -huh. and, and just because I want to, I wanted to see where, where he was with this beautiful painting. And he changed the colors of that painting like four or five times. And then it comes from it. true knowledge. Like you dominate the, yes, yes. the techniques so well that you don't care where are you going? Because yeah. you know that at any stage, you're going to be able to somehow fix it and find it. And it's, you know, uh, a strength that a few people have. Even even Brian was impressive. Like, yeah. he was like, I would never be able yeah. to to reason that way. Like, Right, right. Well, that, it's funny you say that because um, when, I, when I was in grad school, I had to have an internship. And so I, I interned um, at, at with Andrew. Andrew was in Macon, Georgia, in Jolly Rogers Studio. Mm -hmm. So I would drive two and a half hours in the morning to get to that studio. And then I'd spend the day with Andrew. And instead of driving two and a half hours back to Savannah, I would just drive like an hour to Atlanta. I had a friend I could stay with. Mm 
And so when I was in Atlanta, I would go to Gaijin and spend some time with Brian. So with Brian, like you said, uh, it was like a scientist. Yeah. It was like a professor, like everything could be explained for a reason and that had logic behind it. And then I would spend the day with Andrew. It was just like, you know, I don't know. It just felt right. It just uh, it felt right <laughs> to, to put it there. But if if I dug, you know, if I would dig and ask more questions, I would get the knowledge out of him. But it was just like Andrew was just like a creative spirit. Yeah. And like Brian was just like a, a scientist, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Which definitely. is a perfect way of putting it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, bro. Man. We've done a full hour. Yeah. We've, we've done our hour. Yeah. You know, what? what it, well, we, we still have a... Uh, how many? Like a couple of episodes. There's just gonna be you and me, or or we're gonna have guests. Yeah, next time. Uh, next week we have Jonathan Glapion. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah. Let me check my calendar. I believe. Um, no, next week is is. Oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. Next week is. Oh no, I think I'm right. Next week I think is just us two, mm -hmm. and then. We have Glapion. Yeah. So we have one more of me and you and then Glapion with me and you. Uh, okay. And because I, I, I saw on the, one of the last episodes that somebody was asking about the one the, where you were talking about the, the show in Austin, I think. Uh, oh, Nashville. So, yeah. Nashville. Oh, Nashville. Sorry. So uh, yeah. I think that somebody wrote about – It'd be nice. The thing was like, it'd be nice to know a little bit more about shows, which shows do you attend, which shows do you like, what are your yeah. favorite ones? So yeah. I wanted, it, it would be That's cool good. next time that. to talk about all the shows, you know, along the year, like even the European ones, okay. Angle Lamb, yeah. you yeah. know, and whatever, you know, yeah. Como show. Let's do that you know, next week. We'll yeah. do that next week. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. That sounds good. All right, bro. Anything else you need to talk about before we no, cut it just off? Just buy my fucking sketchbook, you bots. Buy the dumb shark. Buy the dumb shark. Buy it. All right. Bye Thanks bye. for listening, people. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Hey, guys. My new sketchbook, Dumb Shark, is finally out. That's great, Fratello. Congrats. Eric, what do you think? Wow, Matteo. This book has really changed how I think about art. The style, the details, the inking techniques, not to mention the colors. Everything on this book is off the chart. You are so far ahead of any other artist, especially me. I know I always say I don't like your Mr. Freeze book, but that's actually a lie. I was just jealous of your incredible talent because I love everything you do. And sadly, I know deep in my heart that I'll never be at your extraordinary level. You truly are the best artist on planet Earth. This book is a game changer, man. I think everyone out there should go and order Mateo's new art book, Dumb Shark, before it sells out. Gee willikers, Eric, that was an incredible endorsement. You really made me want to buy it. How can I get my hands on it? You can find it on www.essentialsequential.com or if you're in Europe, you can order it on www.pulps.fr. Wow, Eric. I didn't know you were such a big fan of mine. Thank you. I really don't need to add anything else. You said it all. What an asshole. Wait, what?